Indeed. Is very focused on the commercial buyer as well, aren't they? They are, and I think they've got to become even more so. I mean, it's the commercial uh, producer that you've got to satisfy here in the stud arena. The, the sheep here today have got to have those true corridor characteristics that can be uh, ongoing to the producer, and he's got to appreciate them. And if the corridor breed can regain some of the lost territory that they've lost, obviously, with uh, crossbreeding, well then, uh, I believe if they have that commercial orientation approach, then it, it'll just automatically slot in. Because they are a true dual purpose sheep. Correct, very much so. And meat is just as important in the corridor breed or any other dual purpose breed for that matter as wool. I feel wool's only about a fifth of the equation, meat's about four fifths. So I'm a more concentration on meat, but I also believe in the dual purpose uh, sheep area that we've got to concentrate on temperament and uh, attitude of the sheep for ease of management and also for the finished product I believe we get a tenderer meat with a quieter animal. So looking at the breed they were sort of known to be able to just dust and stones and they're okay. Big apartment. As, being, as meaning that they'll do they'll do very well in very dry conditions. Oh they do, they've always been renowned for that and Jimmy Little invented the breed for that very purpose and uh, a, a lot of the general public and a lot of producers have forgotten that and now that we've had droughts in North Canterbury it's brought it home a little bit, the, the, the chickens have come home to roost and uh, the corridor breed has come out and proved what it can do whereas a lot of these other breeds, cross breeds, have been found wanting. Now this particular ewe, you, you, you judged very very well, she's a good looking animal, what have you looked for? Uh, just the commercial traits that that ewe's obviously got. She's got a magnificent carcass, tremendous loin, and to rear two good lambs like that and to have the muscling that that ewe's got on is a credit to her. It's a credit to her genetics. That You just can't feed that or make it. Uh, it it's, comes within the genetics of that uh, particular strain, and uh, it, she's a great example, both for a corridor registered breed and for a commercial ewe, she just fit, ticks all the boxes and I indicated in the ring there that she's got that X factor that uh, a lot of sheep haven't got, you know, they can be good but it's that little bit extra that gives them that uh, final analysis and hence she became champion. So for a commercial breeder how important is coming to the Canterbury a and show and, and seeing these animals? I think it's very important, I've always believed that the farmers should come here, I mean We've gone into a figure orientation period and there are figures here now, there are still figures. That you had an index of 1300, nearly 1400, 1394, which is exceptional. And it shows there in the lambs. I'm not a still fanatic as such. I still believe you've got to have a live animal with a good head and the temperament, as I've already explained, the figures have got to match that. And uh, so that's where, where I come from. Yeah.